I know it takes a couple seconds to get going. And I think I think we're good now. So I will just say hello, everybody. I'm your host, Eric Smith. And this is my favorite horror with author and podcast czar, Armand Rosamelia. Hello. Hey, how's it going? All right. Uh, and I, I had meant to ask about the pronunciation of your name. You actually, you got it perfect. You, okay, uh, you're great. You, so that's very impressive. Right off the bat, I'm in a good mood because you got my, you, you said my name right, so we're good. Okay, good. Um, I, I would like to point out that nowhere near my camera is an unboxed Funko Pop. <laughs> good. I, that I That is my pet peeve. That drives me crazy. When people take uh, Funko Pops out of the box, um, I, I know I, I listened to your uh, I listened to you with Max Booth the Third. That was a fun on one his, on his <laughs> podcast, and uh, I did <laughs> hor- a horrible, horrible thing, which was tag everybody on Twitter with a picture of an un- unboxed Funko Pop. Uh, it, I it, post. I do post them on uh, Instagram when I get one. I, I take them out of the box. You know, I'm going cont- to I'm going to stay on. I'm not going to hang up on you. I'm, okay. very, I'm very disappointed in you. I am a uh, uh, since I was a little kid, I am a collector of things. And luckily, my wife is also. So we have I think we just hit 700 Funko Bops in the house. Wow. And they are they're all in boxes. And it drives me crazy when people take them out. I have this crazy, crazy ob- obsession. Like, I'll read a comic book, you know, uh, bo- uh, bagged, and um, and then it immediately has to get sealed again. And then it, and then it goes away into a long box. And uh, it drives a lot of people crazy. Like, I, I collect baseball cards. I collect, as you see behind me, I have a lot of junk that I collect. And they all are in boxes. They are all... Um, collectible still and a bunch of my friends will buy stuff and they also will send me pictures hey i just bought this new you know the the new wolverine i immediately took it out of the box and put it on my shelf and i'm like stop (laughs) stop doing that what what is uh what are some of the most recent pops that you've gotten i just ordered um why don't i just get it i'm always getting uh disney ones for my wife so we have themed bedrooms since the kids are old and out of the house. So I have a baseball room, which has, um, I'm a Boston Red Sox fan, so it has Boston Red Sox stuff, plus the Jacksonville Jumbo Shrimp, which is the AAA team down here. So it's about half and half, and I have all of the Funko Pops that, um, uh, all the MLB ones that have been put out so far. And I just got the Jackie Robinson one, just came in a couple days ago, so that went up. And then we have a Wonder Woman room, and that is all like Linda Carter era Wonder Woman. My wife is a huge, huge fan. So, but we have all the Funko Pops for Wonder Woman in there. And then we have a Disney room, which my wife is a huge, especially Beauty and the Beast. So we have all of the Funko Pops. It's like one wall and um, nothing in the living room. She won't let us, she, she's like, no Funko Pops in the living room or the dining room or the kitchen. Although the kitchen area is all uh, Coca Cola stuff. That she's collected over the years but my office is i have a, an entire wall and a half of just funko pops and then i have a a wall that is uh my marvel wall i'm a, I'm a huge marvel comics fan uh the comic books not necessarily the movies and all the other stuff but growing up it was always marvel never dc for me so i have exactly and i I'm, i was admiring when you first jumped on so i have all of my marvel funko pops in the wall and then i have all blow-ups of some of the some of the greatest comic books ever, you know, Hulk, Hulk win eighty one and Giant Size X Men one and um, you know the first appearance of Punisher and the first Thor and like you know all different things like that. And actually, I'm a, I'm a huge Marvel fan, but I'm a a huge Alpha Flight fan. So that is like my favorite superhero comic book. You know, the Canadian mm-hmm. superheroes where Wolverine basically uh, came from. And uh, so that's uh, anytime I can find anything Alpha Flight, I I also uh, grab that and hang it on the wall. So my office is packed with stuff. <laughs> well, if you if you could see the rest of this room, you would see a room packed with stuff. 
Although I have uh, a month or so ago, a couple months ago, I, I did take down a lot of the action figures and Funko Pops. But I still do have a few up. And I believe my last pop purchase was a glow in the dark. Um, wow. Now I, I can't think of the uh, gauge and the church from Pet Cemetery. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, cause I, I had the regular ones and then I saw there was a glow in the dark set. Well, yeah. You have to, I'm a completist. So I have to get every version of every Funko pop that, that there is, um, which is also part of the uh, problem. So, like, my wife is a huge was a huge fan of the show Supernatural, and they have like seven or eight pops. But then they have like a dozen of um, you know Chase ones and all different things and and Walmart exclusive and you know Target exclusives and all. So I had to go and get all of them for her, and um, and, and until I do that, I literally will have lists of Funko Pops <laughs> or things that I have to uh, that I have to collect. I have I have one Supernatural pop, and it's Charlie, mm -hmm. Felicia Day's character, because uh, I'm a big Felicia Day fan. So when I saw that she had a pop for that, I was like, yeah, I'll grab that. Yeah, I think at this point everybody everybody has a pop. It's uh, it's crazy the amount we we don't collect everything. Like I won't collect I won't collect Star Wars. There's about a billion of them, and I'm not really a big Star Wars fan anymore. Um, but there's a lot of TV shows and different things that uh, that me and my wife both uh, collect. And like, so it's like Seinfeld, when they put out all the Seinfeld ones, we had to get all of them, even the <laughs> the Chase ones and everything. And um, so that's a lot of a lot of fun. But it's a lot of uh, time and money collecting things. So yes. like for for comic books now, the only thing I collect, I get. Uh, Anything Conan, uh, Conan, huge Conan the Barbarian, for I have a complete run of uh, of the original Marvel Conans. In fact, on our one year anniversary, my wife bought me a, a, a mint a copy of Conan number one. That was my that was my gift, and I got her uh, uh, diamond earrings. <laughs> and everybody's like, "She got you a comic book?" I'm like, "That is the greatest comic book ever." So yeah, that was that was important for for me to have that comic book. Like she knew. Me and I had I had always had a really awful, ripped up, chewed version of it, so that was kind of neat. Nice. Well, I actually I just mentioned this on in the last interview that I did. Um, I, I've always been a huge comic book fan, collector, and twice in my life I've sold off or gotten rid of my complete collection. Yeah, as have and I. And I don't have the time, money, or energy to hunt them all down again which is why i'm so glad that we're in this this golden age of collected editions and you mentioned conan you can't see it you can't see where i'm pointing but right up there i have the first five volumes of the conan yeah. original marvel years epic collections yep i have all those too those are um and was so happy when those were coming out uh, Iron Man for the longest time was my favorite character, mm -hmm. and I had I had a ton of tales of suspense. I didn't have his first appearance, but I had like Hawkeye's first appearance, a lot of the old stuff. And then from Iron Man one to two hundred, I was only missing like seventeen issues. Wow! Out of that whole run, but again, those were gone. Now I have the first four or five. I think it's four volumes of the epic collection so i can go back and you know reread those classic stories yeah see um, i i i subscribe to marvel unlimited so mm -hmm. for for 10 bucks a month i i will go back and they don't have everything up there but they get about i think forty five thousand different issues up there so like i'm like oh you know what like this week i'm like i'm gonna read punisher i'm gonna read every appearance of punisher until he got his own until you get the mini series and then go on. So I'm up to like 2009 uh, reading the publisher. And a lot of these, a lot of them I had, but I stopped collecting or I was missing an issue here and there. So it's, it's neat to, it's neat to go back and read them. Same thing with like any of the Chris Claremont X-Men. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to start from the beginning uh, of, of his stuff and go. So it's, it's neat. I spend um, probably an hour a day <laughs> reading about five or six 
uh, comic books, like between uh, my, my, it's kind of like my reward for, okay, I hit my writing goal for the day. So now I'm going to read, you know, Punisher 2009. I'm going to start the, uh, the run on that one. I need to, I need to set aside that time because I'm about six months behind on my comics. Cause I still buy tons of comics every week. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I'm about six months behind. So I need to, I need to catch up. I need to set time aside, but I'm always reading books. Yeah. Or working stupid day job, getting in the way of everything. <laughs> um, I, uh, I collect, I collect, I, uh, anything Conan, anything. I'm also a big fan of, um, John Carter, Warlord of Mars mm-hmm. and the Deja Thor. So, so any of those come out and then Red Sonia. So those are like my, my automatic pulls and anything that comes out. So if it's a trade paperback, whatever it is, uh, my comic book store will pull those for me, which is neat. And then I get a lot of my Funko Pops from them as well. So that's fun. But I do, I'll do. i stack them up like eight or nine months worth. And then I'm like, you know what? Instead of reading uh, online, I'm going to take all the Conans out, <laughs> out of the bags, read them, put them back in the bags, and put them away. So did you get Sonya Versal? Yeah, I've got everything that's everything that's that's come out, and then back in the day, anything that was out, I uh, I collected. So there's not many know. things I have complete. I have all the complete Conans. I have all of the Dark Horse Conans. I have all of the original Red Sonias. I have all everything up to all the Dynamite um, and everything else. And the same thing with John Carter stuff and Alpha Flight. Those are like the the my completes. I need to get either. An Alpha Flight Omnibus or Epic Collections or something. Because, yeah, I love the old, the original Alpha Flight stuff. Yeah. It was fantastic. Yeah. Uh, and I don't have any of it at the moment. Yeah, that's that's still my, I don't know, and I don't know why. Just when it came out, it just hit at the right time for me. And uh, and those are those great. Even the, even the, when they did, you know, Omega Flight and they did all the, the revamp of it. Um, not that they were... The original was phenomenal, but uh, good enough. And of course, I bought them. And then I was doing once once we got into like the two thousands, you could actually um, find places where they 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 listed all the appearances. Then I started going, oh, they appeared in you know X Men whatever. So I'm gonna go and find that issue. So I started doing that as well of collecting when guys are, are you know certain people are in some. I was going to do that with Wolverine at some point, but he's in about 8,000 uh, issues of things now, so I gave up on that. Yeah. Well, if, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, if you could see the wall that I'm looking at, I actually have a bunch of comic books hanging up on the wall. Uh, they're bagged and boarded and then just stuck up there, but I have, uh, if I could read it from here, Conan the Barbarian issue, f- I think that's 44 which has Conan and Red Sonja on the cover. Mm-hmm. I've got a Red Sonja number one up there, and then some really good variant covers for uh, Mars Attacks, Red Sonja. Oh, nice. Um, Arthur Soydam, however you say, I don't know how you say his name, the guy that did the Marvel Zombies stuff. Okay, yeah, yeah. Did I have the, there's a cover that's an homage to Attack of the 50-Foot Woman, mm-hmm. which I loved, and then one with the... Uh, Robbie the Robot. Oh, nice. On that. Um, and you mentioned Punisher 2099. I have issue one of Doom 2099 hanging on the wall. <laughs> nice. Uh, just all sorts of contest of champions, number one. Yeah. Wow. Some Clive Barker stuff. Just uh, the stuff I like to look at. Yeah. I love that wall. Yeah, that's, that, that's me. It's, it's, the, it's the wall like right, right in front of me. Is all uh, is all that stuff? And it's all the stuff that I grew up on. It's all the stuff that I remember as a kid. You know, I mean, even collecting, they know the company. They pull every variant cover. So especially like Dark Horse, you know, oh Conan number one is like fifteen different variant covers. So they had to order all fifteen of them for me. Or, or I feel like um, I'm not doing my job as a uh, ridiculous collector. <laughs> well, my I go to a, uh, I think it's a great comic book shop that I go to right now. And they have, uh, they do a live video once a week. Used to be twice a week. Um, but now it's, it's every Tuesday they do a live video. And it starts with them showing, showing off some of the stuff that came in mm-hmm. for the week. And then they do a, 
it's not really an auction. They're just pulling old books out of boxes and they'll slap it up and say, this is five bucks. And whoever claims it in the chat first, yeah, it's going to go in their file. And then they have an after show where they go over every variant cover and every book that came in for the week. Wow. And some of those books, especially dynamite will have 15 variant covers <laughs> Yeah, for, for a book. And, uh, I don't have them pull every variant cover for me, but it's nice watching the video. I can say, oh, I like that cover. Can you pull that for me? Put it in my yeah. file. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're a great, great store. Yeah, even with only pulling like three or four titles a month, I'm still I'm still, still spending like 60 or or $100 with all the variants and the trade paperbacks and all the other stuff. And they know me too. They're like, oh, we just got this. New T-shirts coming. I can order this Conan T-shirt. I can order this statue. I can order this. Yeah, just yeah, just throw it, throw it, throw it in the box. I'll come, I'll come by in a couple weeks and grab everything. Yeah, they'll do that for me too. And and they have layaway. Um, I have an Iron Man statue. Uh, that was I forget how much it was, but it, I didn't have that much on me. And they're like, yeah, you can just pay however much you want. Yeah. Whenever you come in and. Once it's paid off, you can take it. Uh, which brings up a question. If you have a statue, do you leave that in the box? Yes. Oh, that's crazy talk. Yep. Statues stay statues stay in the box. They are they are opened at the counter to make sure nothing is broken. And then I buy it. We we put it back. My wife has about probably about a dozen different Wonder Woman statues, but they're all all of them are still in the box. Well, it's a good thing you can't see what I'm looking at. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've got my Iron Man statue there. I've got a beautiful bust of the lizard. Mm. My favorite Spider-Man villain. I've got a great Doctor Doom, Doctor Aphra from Star Wars. I know you said you're not a big fan. Do you know Doctor Aphra? Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, I, 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 I still know all of them, <laughs> all the new stuff. I just, I kind of... Uh... I don't know, I feel like, for me, I feel like Star Wars left me behind. I, I think when I was 12 years old, uh, <laughs> back in the day, it was the greatest thing ever. You know, I had a million different uh, uh, of the original Star Trek action figures, and I did take those out of the uh, packaging and play with them, by the way. But, um, yeah, I just, uh, once the uh, once they restarted going through, I, uh, I, I watched the first couple, and I was like, this just isn't, I'm not their, I'm not their audience anymore. And I also don't want to start spending millions of dollars on all the new action figures and the toys and everything else. Um, I focus on Dr. Afra. I get the trade paperback. I've tried to, I still get way too many monthly books, but I've tried to uh, focus on collected editions, mm -hmm. trade paperbacks. So yeah, Dr. Afra is the only Star Wars book I get and I get it in the trades. Um, there's a hardback that's a, it's not a novel. It's a transcript of the script for a audio book they did. Hmm. If that makes sense. So I have that. I really wish they would do a novel. I wish they would do a TV show with Dr. Afra. but, uh, like I have not watched, I watched the Mandalorian. I haven't watched the book of Boba Fett. I yeah, don't I watched, know if I'm going to watch Obi-Wan. Yeah. I'm not, uh, I'm not, but I'm also not a huge fan of anything that uh, the Marvel movies and all that, you awesome. know, like, like that for me, that's not, um, like, you know, I, uh, so I saw like the Wolverine ones and I think Hugh Jackman does a great job, but I never saw the X-Men ones when I looked at some of the, the actors they cast them, like they're just putting out big name people who, who kind of look like them, but there's no way they're going to pull this off. Um, I watched all the Netflix shows because I, I obviously a big fan of um punisher and i i loved um i, I did not like the iron fist one but mm. uh luke cage luke cage and iron fist i mean heroes for hire group i grew up reading those books and stuff so i thought they were pretty good i thought the uh, uh jessica jones was uh, was done well and i really liked daredevil i mean daredevil was one of those characters that i grew up on too and i think they did a great job on the small screen with those i think once we got into for me once we got into some of the other like the 
the Avengers movies and the Captain America and Iron Man, all those. I thought it went a little bit too big, too Hollywood, too let's try to drag everybody in to like this thing, which I understand, you know, you gotta, you gotta make money. My wife started watching um, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and I got through like three episodes and I'm like, I, I can't do this. I, this is so corny. And uh, we, we were at a store once. We went to a store, not my comic book store, but another store. And I bought the um, uh, Nick Fury, the Chase one they had for like 10 bucks. And we get to the counter and the girl's like maybe 20 bringing it. And she looks at it and she goes, well, this isn't Nick Fury. Nick Fury's black. Mm. And I said, well, if for you he is now with the movies. But Nick, Nick Fury was Sergeant Fury in the Howling Commandos since before I was born. And she goes, well, this, uh, this is, this is, this. and she got so annoyed and everything. And I just said, anyway, can, can you ring that up so I can get the <laughs> hell out of here? Like, she was very upset. And I'm like, but that's for me. And I'm, I'm the old man that I'm like, that's what I'm talking about. You know, like you're you're mad because I remember being a kid and getting Sergeant Fury and his Howling Commandos, uh, you know, issues and loving those and reading all through those. And then as you go along and it's funny now that they think Samuel L. Jackson is is Nick Fury. I'm a fan of both, um, although I do prefer Nick Fury as a spy to the World War Two stuff, which is I enjoy that. But like I, I have the omnibus of Nick Fury, Agent of Shield. Yeah. The Jim Steranko. Yeah, yeah, and that's game. and that's great stuff. That's, that's absolutely love that. Yeah. And again, at the risk of being hung up on, I actually think that David Hasselhoff was not horrible as Nick Fury in that made-for-TV movie. <laughs> yeah. The movie isn't good. Right. But I thought he did a good job. But I also like the ultimate the the ultimate comics line that marvel did where they based nick fury on samuel L. jackson yeah and then of course now he's in the movies and everything and i i have no problem at all with samuel L. jackson as nick fury yeah no neither and, and neither do i but i grew up on right i grew up on sergeant fury that's what i that's what i grew up on so and then to argue with a kid who's you know the right. same age as my kids about something that you know, like you don't you don't even know you're working in a store that's selling comic book stuff you have no idea what you're even talking about it's uh, and again i'm the old man get off my lawn you know <laughs> yes <laughs> well i do i already have tickets for uh on thursday i'm going to see uh dr strange and that looks and that looks good like when i saw dr strange and we saw it in the theater i was like you know what all right i like this i like what they're what they're doing here and that one we might we might go see, but I never saw, I saw the first Avengers and I think I saw the first couple of Iron Man and the first couple of Captain America. But then I'm, I was like, you know what? I don't want to go. I don't want to do all this. I don't want to, these are not the characters that I am still reading and still remember, you know, I, I've seen all of the Marvel movies. Not, I haven't seen all of them in theaters. Um, like Spider-Man, no way home. I did not get to see it in the theater. I just saw it when it came out on home video. Um, but I've seen the majority of them, I think, in the theaters. And, uh, of course, I say, I say I have tickets to see it this coming Thursday. By the time this video goes up, it will, I will have already seen it. Right. <laughs> um, I've enjoyed all of the Disney Plus shows. I'm loving Moon Knight. Is it good? Oh, you know, what's funny is, like, you know, I, you, we grew up, I grew up reading the comic, and the comic book, I go back f for Marvel Unlimited, and I start reading it, and I'm like, this isn't at nearly as good as I remember as a 12-year-old. As a right. <laughs> you know, like, there's a lot of, well, I mean, there's a lot of racist and a lot of um, really awful things that they put in there, not even if, not even that part of it, it's just the, the... I don't know. It just was very lacking. And I was like, all right, I haven't gone to, okay, let me see what they're doing with Moon Knight now. Hopefully they're doing something much better, you know? Um, but I won't subscribe to, I won't get Disney plus. And, um, but I, 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 I'm interested in seeing what their, uh, what the, not the early eighties version, <laughs> you know, of Moonlight, which is, which is really 
the stories make no sense, mm-hmm. and it's and it's uh, you know, it's a couple times I'll go through I'm like, am I missing pages here because he they jump him around so quickly in yeah. this like to rush the story like, um, so that was kind of that was for me that was kind of weird and I hadn't read Moon Knight in thirty years. I have the the first Moon Knight omnibus. I have the second one on order. Because, again, growing up, one of my favorite characters. Um, I love, love getting an omnibus, especially if I can get it cheaper than cover price. Because they're so expensive. Um, But, yeah, I've really, there's only one one episode left. I don't know what, how they're going to finish it up with only one episode left. But (laughs) I've really enjoyed that show and all the other ones that have been on there. Um, So, yeah, I'm I'm a fan of the, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Couldn't get into Agents of Shield. No. Like you said, it was just it was middle of the road TV. And that's what it was. It was like it was like watching any other show, the the cheesy network TV. Mm-hmm. And then every now and then, like, oh, at the end of the last three seconds of this episode, here comes Samuel L. Jackson walking onto the set. You know, or they they mentioned the Hulk, or they mentioned they're mentioning somebody right. and and the characters that they had lined up for it i did not like i didn't like it i didn't like any of the the new agents coming in i'm like this doesn't this doesn't work i watched i don't know the first five episodes or so of the first season and then i stopped watching it and i did come back after uh captain america winter soldier after that movie came out mm-hmm. where now, have you seen that one? Uh, that one I saw, yeah. Okay, so when they revealed that S.H.I.E.L.D. was run by HYDRA, right. the movie, I was like, well, how is this going to affect the show? So I had to go yeah. back and I watched, it was probably the last four or five episodes of season one and see how it tied in. So that's, and then a few random episodes here and there I would see. Yeah. But yeah, I just could not get it. It was just, yeah. yeah I, give so, everything, I give everything three episodes. And I was done. My wife's watched. My wife's, I think, watched all of them. I think my wife, at night while I went to bed, she would, she would knock out a couple of, uh, of episodes every night until she she finished it. And she she liked it, but she's she's not really except for Wonder Woman. She's not a comic book fan. So for her, they're just movies. For her, when I'm I'm watching these and I'm like, oh, uh, oh, you see that that girl there in you know. Oh, that's Jessica Jones, and she's gonna have a baby with Luke Cage in the comic books, and you know what I mean. And she's yeah. like, "I don't care. I don't care about any of that." But I'm like, "I'm a geek, and this is like I can tell you all every character that they that they bring on, <laughs> who that person is gonna be." I'm actually. I just got this book today. I'm very excited. Uh, it just came out today. You know. Oh, okay. And uh, I was very excited to learn because you can't really. You could barely see him on the cover, but Luke Cage. Oh. Luke Cage is in this. I was very excited by that. That's cool, yeah. Um, Yeah, this is from Aconite. They're doing all these original Marvel novels. Oh, that's cool. Um, And I'm very excited because they're actually doing a Squirrel Girl novel. (laughs) Wow. So, and I just found out they're doing a Dazzler. Oh, wow. Dazzler, yeah. So, uh, yeah, they're a great publisher. I got two of their books today, the two that came That's out today. Cool. Hopefully somebody will bring Alpha Flight into all of this. Uh, well, I know I know a couple of the authors that are writing for them. Maybe I'll put that in somebody's ear. That would be, uh, that, that, I would, that I would read in a heartbeat. Although I'm not sure. They, they, they basically have four sort of imprints for Marvel. They have... Uh, the Xavier Institute, so that's all X-Men stuff. That's where right. Dazzler's going to be coming out. Right. Uh, Tales of Asgard or something, so that's going to be all Asgardians. Oh, Loki, yeah. Um, Heroines, which they've done uh, uh, Domino, Outlaw, my favorite, Elsa Bloodstone, mm. and Rogue, and then Untold, which is villain stuff. They've got a couple Doctor Doom novels, one with the Dark Avengers. Okay. Um, 
So I'm not sure where they'd fit Alpha Flight unless they picked one of the female characters and put them in heroines yeah. and brought the other team members in. But they can always expand. And this is actually based on the miniatures game Crisis Protocol. Oh, okay. So they're using characters that are in that game. Hmm. And then if you're familiar with Tim Wagoner. Oh, yeah, I love Tim. His uh, Zombicide. I saw that. I saw that. uh, Yeah, I saw the uh, when that was coming. I'm I'm uh, I'm uh, I've done several uh, uh, signings and several conventions with Tim over the years. Yeah, I love his stuff. He's a fellow Ohioan. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah, but this is this is Aconite. Same publisher. Oh, okay, Yeah. I'm going to have to check those out. But, uh, yeah, so I, I pick up a ton of their... They do a lot of board game and video game novels and the Marvel stuff and really a fan of their work. But, um, all right. So, let's see. I think I've covered any comic book stuff I wanted to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Although I could... Are you a fan of uh, Steve Niles? Yeah. Yep, fan of Steve. Because so I have... I always... I have a list on my phone every week. My uh, comic book store sends out their invoice as an email. So I make a list and I'm finally very excited that uh, criminal cop, criminal macabre, the complete Cal McDonald stories finally coming out for me. Oh, but have you been getting the dynamite? (laughs) The D I E. Yeah. Exclamation point. Yeah. Since yeah. you get the Red Sonia stuff. Yeah. Have you have you kept up? Have you been reading them? You know, that's still a, it's still a stack I have to uh I haven't read probably in over a year I haven't read any of the Red Sonys. I've just been collecting them and, and putting them in the piles in the in the other room on the bed. And it's one of those at some point I'm gonna I'm gonna grab them and go through. Um the other thing I I read Usually when it comes out are some of the Conans. I'll jump. And then all the Conan adjacent stuff, you know, that they're that they're doing. Uh the what ifs and all the other things that they uh, that they throw him him through. The one shots I love, I can read them right away. So are you, have you been getting uh Savage Avengers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I um that's one that I was I was getting it monthly and then just sort of stopped and now have the trade paperbacks. And I'm actually looking forward to the next iteration that's throwing in uh, Cloak and Dagger, I believe, and some other characters. Yeah. I was, I was a big Cloak and Dagger fan back in the day. Yeah, I, 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 uh, I, I read that too, Cloak and Dagger. Wow. The, um, the one book that always jumps to the top of my pile, because it's out of continuity, so I don't have to worry about the fact that I'm behind is uh, the DC versus vampires. Okay. Which I've really been enjoying. Have you seen, just started pouring rain here. Uh, are you familiar with that book? DC? I know the book. I'm, I'm not a, I, I don't collect it. I'm, I am a Marvel only. Oh, <laughs> uh, and then red Sonya. That's pretty much, uh, that's pretty much it. Like there, there's a lot of other things out there that I'd look at, but, I've I've never really been a DC fan. I mean, even growing up, uh, I was never a Batman fan, except for the TV show. I was never a Superman fan. Um, you know, none of those really appealed to me. And plus, as even as a kid, you know, growing up in the '80s, all of those were already on like 300 and 400 epi- uh, issues at that point. You know, so it was like you're not gonna you're not gonna collect these going back. You're not gonna find these anywhere. And uh, so I, I started with I really started with with all the Marvel stuff and and for a long time I was that snob who wouldn't get anything independent uh, at all and then a buddy of mine was like oh here the, the, these guys put this out it's a, it's it's a thing about turtles there's they live in the <laughs> sewers so I had like the first I still have the first five issues of uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles which are worth a crap load of money yeah and I and I have a all the way, I think, to F- issue 100 of Spawn. I was a big uh, fan of Spawn back in the day, and uh, and Gru. <laughs> I had the first issues of uh, of Gru as well. So there's like certain things like that, but 
literally any time I get DC, uh, I would give it to the kids to uh, to read and toss around, or or I would trade with other people for, hey, I'll give you these four Batmans for those those you know two X Men or something like that. So I did that a lot as a kid. All right, I've always I always kind of waffle because I think they've both had their creative ups and downs. Right. And so there were times when I was a Marvel person all the way, and then times when that would sort of wane and and DC would kind of rise up, uh, and then that would go, it would go the other way. Um, I actually, I, I stopped reading and collecting comics for about three to five years, um, and I came back for two reasons. Uh, DC did Rebirth, and mm-hmm. I kept hearing about Captain America being a Hydra agent. Right. And so I had to, I came back and I got all of the DC Rebirth books, uh, the first issues, and started getting Captain America. And that's when I, that's what got me back into everything. But at that point, I liked DC more. I loved what they were doing with Rebirth. Mm -hmm. Well, Marvel's gone up and down so much. And it's also, it's almost like I've, inadvertently followed that trend when all of a sudden all these awful things are marvel's getting sold marvel's doing this marvel's coming out with so many missteps on their books and everything at those points i wasn't even reading comic books yeah you know i would i would come back in and i would do every now and then like a buddy all all my friends were still collecting so they would be like here i bought you this uh you know the death of superman and i'm like there's there's no way you're killing superman but you know (laughs) You know those 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 kinds of things. So I still I have some DC issues in my collection, but I don't think I've really read too many of them. And then of course my wife collects uh, Wonder Woman, so she has a lot of um, not any. And I, we still got some of the newer stuff, but it's mostly the old stuff. She'll go one or two anytime we go to a convention that has comic books. Um, I have my list in my little uh, notebook <laughs> or in my wallet, and I have her list and. And we'll go through and we'll we'll uh, pick up a couple of issues. But she's she's not with comic books. She's not crazy like I am. Like you have to get everything, and and that's why I've stopped collecting everything. That's why I was like, you know what? At one point, there's like 15 different X Men titles coming yeah. out every month, and I'm like, I can't I can't do this anymore. You know, and plus they're not they're not 25 cents anymore. <laughs> you know, yeah. they're not 35 cents now. So it's um. That's why I love the the Marvel Unlimited because I can go back and read a lot of these. Now there's a ton of things that aren't on there that I was I was excited when Conan came back to Marvel. I'm like, okay, good. Then they'll put all of those on there. And even though I've read them, even though I have the trade paperbacks and all that, um, it's still cool to just start from the beginning and go. You know, I'm going to read 275, uh, you know, issues of my favorite comic book for probably the fifth time. But uh, they're not that they, they haven't put those on there yet. But um, bastards. Yeah, there's a lot, and there's there's some stuff they they don't put on. They'll put um, like the first three issues of something, and then they'll put issue ten to fifteen, and then it's like random. So I was, I always have to look and make sure everything can be read online before I start. Um, you know a certain thing, and it's like four four issue like mini series. You know yeah. things, and they they have they have one of them. One of them will be up, and it'll be like three. And I'm like, who's going to read number three of the of a four issue series? <laughs> yeah, that's bizarre. But I think it's I think they supposedly add new ones every week, and I'll see the new ones that are coming out. And right now, they're doing a lot of the uh, Moon Knight ones. They're uh, they're they're finally I get however they're scanning them in, however they do it. But uh, it's fun. I have a very big, my main monitor is like 32 inches or something. So to uh, blow it up onto, and it's like you're reading the comic book bigger than it, than it is in real life, which is nice. Very nice. All right. Well, you yourself are a writer. I am, I am. And uh, I, just to show off one of your books. Oh, nice. That you co-wrote. I love me a time travel, time loopy kind of thing. <laughs> But uh, your, I believe your most recent, I could be wrong, but I believe your most recent is A Month of Duncan. Is that correct? No, I've had about uh, six Holy. books uh, since then. 
Holy moly. Yeah. In fact, I just, as we're talking, I just had a brand new book drop today that I I co-wrote with Chuck Buddha, who's my co-host on the Mondo Method podcast, called In the Marrow, and it is a weird Western book. Oh, nice. Should have been out about a year and a half ago, but the publisher uh, dropped the ball. We took took it back and went with it somewhere else. That is the latest. And then a week ago... I had uh, The Price came out, which I co-wrote with John Quick, and it is a heavy metal horror book. That came out, and I've had uh, the first three books in my crime thriller series, the first Coast Thriller series, January 15th, February 15th, March 15th came out. So I had those those three all came out as well. I think I lost you. You are frozen. <laughs>